What's going on guys, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another transfer video for you guys today. Sorry guys for the lack of uploads yesterday, but there was just barely any development on any transfer news. Some talk about Mendy, a little bit about Declan Rice that we're going to talk about today because it's developed a little bit more, but yesterday there was barely anything to talk about. And you know me, I'm not going to upload just for the sake of it, even though I do want to bang out the daily uploads on this channel, I don't want 10 minutes of waffling because nobody's going to watch that, nobody's going to watch the next video after that. And you guys are after actual content. You're not after just watching me sit here in front of a camera for 10 minutes. If you guys are, big up because you guys are the real supporters out there. But I know you guys actually want to hear some actual transfer news. So we've got news here today. We're going to talk about Declan Rice and a bit more movement in the Mendy saga. We'll talk about Hudson Adoy because I know Bayern Munich are also a little bit interested in him. And a couple transfers out for the season that have gone Chelsea's way as well. We're going to discuss that as well. But before I start this video, if you guys have haven't done so already please smash that like button press that subscribe button and hit the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever i release any new content on this channel now we'll go straight into the declan rice news and we know that two days ago we spoke about declan rice with david ornstein reporting that west stand stance on declan rice is still that he is not for sale at any price and we know that sources to the club are saying that despite the interest from Chelsea, a move from Declan Rice is unthinkable and would heap even more pressure on the club and their board members. After heavy criticism from West Ham fans for selling Grady D and Garner, we already know that they don't want to have any more issues with selling their best asset in Declan Rice as well. And this has left Declan Rice and West Ham both at their own different crossroads. They both see two separate fates and two separate decisions that they can make. And in the case of Declan Rice, Declan Rice is thinking of whether he should stay one more year at West Ham, whether he should commit his future there and then try and join Chelsea for a cheaper fee, or try and join us now where we're transitioning and we're looking very threatening for trophies because... Declan Rice does see the the mess at West Ham right now. He is looking at this club and he's seeing that they are going to be in another relegation battle. They aren't progressing. They're getting rid of their assets again. And it looks like another season of a relegation battle. And Declan Rice is now sitting there at a crossroads trying to think, is this what he wants to spend another season doing? Or does he potentially want to try, try and hand in a transfer request and put pressure on West Ham to sell him to Chelsea? We know the situation with Rice and Chelsea. Declan Rice came from the Chelsea Academy. He loves Chelsea. Chelsea want him back as well. Frank Lampard wants him back as well. And in the case of Chelsea, they understand that if Declan Rice was to try and push through a move and hand in a transfer request, it would put more leniency on Chelsea in the negotiations and it would give them a lot more power. So there is a chance that Declan Rice can try and hand in a transfer request to try and speed up the process. But Declan Rice does still have strong feelings for West Ham as well. And I think Throughout this entire saga, Declan Rice has tried to do the right thing by both West Ham and Chelsea. I've always said that when it comes to Declan Rice and Chelsea, this does look inevitable. It's just more of a case of when and not if. And I know that £80 million pound price tag, if, that's, if that stays the case for the rest of the summer, there's no way we're getting him this summer. Chelsea, there's already some, pe some sources in the board saying that some people aren't necessarily happy with the major price tag that they would have to pay for Declan Rice and would be more willing to look at either other options or to try and wait another year for Declan Rice to try and potentially leave West Ham or for the transfer fee to go down a little bit further as well me personally I, I, this could happen this could happen if it stays at 80 million i doubt it but we know west ham are also interested in emerson they're also trying to find a new player so that fit david Moyes' style of play and they've struggled to do that because of the lack of transfers out of the club so west ham could eventually be pushed into trying to sell declan rice i do think that this is the sort of transfer that is going to go all the way down to deadline day if this one eventually does happen it's going to be one of those long long lasting ones but it's all about West Ham's resolve. And like I said about West Ham's crossroads as well, it's all about what West Ham want. Do they value Declan Rice over other reinforcements? Or do they think those other reinforcements would give them a better chance of staying up compared to Declan Rice's overall ability? If they prefer the other reinforcements, they might eventually be forced to sell Declan Rice. If they don't, then they've got all the power in the world to try and hold Declan Rice for another year. And even in that case, like I said, Declan Rice will eventually be a Chelsea player. It's just a matter of if it's this season, next season, maybe even the season after that. I don't know, but Declan Rice will be a Chelsea player. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. 
Second piece of news for today, we're going to talk about Hudson Odoi and Bayern Munich have allegedly reignited their interest in signing Hudson Odoi. We know about the big saga in 1819, which caused Hudson Odoi to get a bump on 180k a week contract. And Bayern Munich were heavily interested in signing him then. And with Coutinho and Ivan Perisic returning back to their parent clubs from loan last season, they have now reignited their interest in Callum Hudson-Odoi. And I think one of the reasons for this is because of the familiar contacts. They had deep talks of Hudson-Odoi with his family as well. So those communications are there. And this one is just a much shorter term deal. So this might be something that piques his interest a little bit. Juventus are allegedly interested as well. And in the case of Hudson-Odoi, I get people are worried a bit, especially because he didn't start in the Brighton game on Monday night. And if he left, I would want it to be a club that would give him consistent starting 11 game time. I'm just not sure if that's Bayern Munich. I'm sure he would get um, game time at Bayern Munich. This is the most jam-packed transfer This is uh, Let me get my words out. This is the most jam-packed season in history because of all the issues with the virus last season. And fixtures are going to be so cramped. And because of that, Hudson Doy will still get game time, even if he's not in the starting 11. But I want him to get starting 11 game time because if that's not the case, he might as well just stay at Chelsea. Yeah, he didn't play against Brighton on, on Monday. But he will get game time this season. We haven't got as many wingers as we do last season. He is going to get game time, especially as the season progresses and games start coming more thick and fast. He will get that sort of game time. So I don't really see the point of us loaning him to Bayern Munich. Juventus is the same as well. You get starting eleven game time. Also at, at a team that is going to win the Premier, who that is going to win the title at their respective divisions, but. It doesn't make much of a difference to Chelsea. Last season, I would be all for a loan if the right club came in because with the lack of game time that he had last season and all the injuries and everything, I think he would have had a much more progressive season on loan to another club. Now, with Willian out, with Pedro out, it don't really make that much sense to me. So... I would rather see him stay at Chelsea. I wouldn't be completely against him going to Bayern Munich, but no... Uh, it's not really for me. I don't think so. I think we, if we get rid of Hudson Doy, we now got to bring in another winger as well, and then that winger is blocking Hudson Doy's future progressions as well. So I'm not that interested. Again, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. But I don't think this one's happening. I kind of hope it doesn't happen either. Uh, next news: Cal um, Connor Gallagher has signed a new contract and has gone to West Bromwich Albion on loan. We know Connor Gallagher had a string of interest from a lot of Premier League clubs this season. He was initially meant to be going to Crystal Palace but after Mishi Batshuayi's one year loan deal to Palace that's gone off the table but he's gone to West Brom now and that's a progressive club they play a good attacking brand of football under Slab and Bilic so it's very similar to the loan at Swansea as well so yeah I'm all happy for this one we know he wasn't going to be staying at Chelsea for this season anyway it was better for him to go out and get valuable Premier League experience so I'm happy with that one. I ain't got any complaints about it. Hopefully he has a very good spell. And it'll be interesting to watch West Brom as well. In between him and Branislav Ivanovic returning. Um, we'll go in about Mendy for a little bit. There's been barely any developments on this one. But I'm hearing the fee that that Rens want is £28 million Plus Tomori on loan for the season. And we said that this fee was going to drag itself out till deadline day as well. Because Rens know that we need a goalkeeper. And because of that they're holding out for the price tag that they want. It might be tougher for us than the Havertz or the Sancho, no not the Sancho, Havertz or the Werner deal or any other deal that we tried to make, but I do still think this deal is going to go across the line, it depends, it all depends on if Marina can work her magic again, and I do think she can, it's just, maybe magic doesn't always strike, and I think with Renz this might be the case, if we have to give him 28 million for a, for a new goalkeeper, after Kepa's performance on Monday, I seriously don't care, just get a goalkeeper in. Final piece of news, Davide Zappa Costa has completed a season-long loan to Genoa. We know that he was one of the deadwood that Chelsea were trying to get rid of, but because of the whole situation with the market this season, because of the virus, what, ha what the case is is that no club can meet any of our valuations for our deadwood signings, which means that all we can really try and hope to do is loan them out for another year and hope when they come back to Chelsea, the market is a bit more stabilised and there'll be more clubs there that can reach that valuation. But he's on loan for another season. That's another player off the wage bill for this year. And thoughts on it? I have no thoughts on it. I just wanted us to get rid of him anyway. So he's gone for a year. It is what it is. It's done. But guys, this is your transfer video for the day. Let me know your 
thoughts on any of the comments I've said down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Up the chills.